Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 7681198. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Father, we just trust you that you will send us help now, that as we go from here, your spirit will guide us. You'll give us insight into all that we need to discuss as we look at this family clinic. Please help us at this point. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our theme for this year is... Uh, coupling together to become channels and vessels in the hand of God for revival. Uh, we are going to draw issues from few outlines that we have drawn here, and we shall be trusting God to help us uh, particularly so that your purpose for our lives uh, and the purpose of God for our lives will become accomplished even as couples and we will see a bigger move of God in our lives as we couple together as a husband and wife. Uh, we'll start by reading a bit of our introduction. Uh, when the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone, I will make a help meet for him. God was looking for a matrimony that would be effective as his channel of accomplishing his divine purpose on earth. He was only equipping the man that he has made uh, for the greater fulfillment and greater fruitfulness and preparing for a more focused impact on the earth as his delegates. So in this clinic today, by God's grace, we will explore how to continuously stand together as husband and wife, coupled in oneness to allow the river of living water to flow through our homes, to bring revival. We are going to pick some few issues together and I will ask uh, Sister Shade to start to introduce uh, to us, coupling together to become God's channels and God's vessels for revival. Sister Shade, can you? Yes, yes, from number one. Right. Um. We are discussing about coupling together to become channels and vessels in God's hands for revival. The couple as one indivisible channel in God's hands um, is to establish his purpose on the earth. It is clear to us that God has ordained that everyone that must come into the earth should be raised and nurtured in a family of a man and a woman who are married as husband and wife. God looks for a godly offspring from every couple in the kingdom of God. God's purpose for marriage must again be made clear to us and we individually need to sit down and ask, what is God's purpose for our own marriage in particular? And how 
have we fared in achieving it? And the Bible says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And uh, the two of them shall become one flesh. Uh, let's not forget that the family we are talking about here is the biblical family of a man and a woman, not the aberrations that have uh, come on in our time. A man and a woman who are married as husband and wife. So we want to look at how we can couple together as one indivisible channel in God's hand to establish his purpose on the earth. Right. <clears throat> uh, to pick our discussion, let us first look at Malachi chapter 2, uh, just to see that God has a very clear purpose uh, in bringing a man together with his wife. Let's look at Malachi and chapter 2. And as we read Malachi chapter 2, uh, let me ask our sister Giata to help us speak from verse 13. Chapter 2, from verse 13 to verse 16. And this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying, so he does not regard the offering anymore, nor receiving a good way from your hands. Yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of the youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the Spirit? And why one is six godly offspring? Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce, for he covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to quickly uh, highlight one or two issues so that we can talk over uh, the purpose for our marriage in particular. We feel that every couple, there is a purpose why God has brought you together. And particularly when you have now become uh, a couple in ministry, now you are in the clergy, and in some uh, of our church tradition, uh, the wife of the pastor automatically becomes the leader of the women, or the leader of women fellowship, as it happens in several places. The wife of the, of the bishop uh, is now the uh, president of the mother's union in different places. Recording in which, progress. Which means there is no other way for us to think about our being uh, couples as we come into ministry that we can think less of our marriage becoming a vessel and a channel in the hand of God. But as we were reading Malachi chapter 2, few things that jumped out again that I want to highlight before we throw the matter open for a discussion. Now, in that verse, verse 14 and 15, say, but you say, why does he not hear our prayer? Because the Lord was witness between you and the wife of your youth, to whom you have been faithless. Though she is, your companion, and your wife by covenant. Did he not make them one with a portion of the spirit in their union? 
Uh, when I read it from English Standard Version, I see the Bible is saying, God has left a portion of the Spirit, and the Spirit there is the Holy Spirit in their union. As if in our union as husband and wife, it is not just that we were joined together physically. We were joined together, and in order for that union to produce the kind of offspring, the kind of channel to be a blessing to the purpose of God on earth, God also, because of our marriage, has left a portion of the spirit as if there's an anointing for marriage, as if there is a divine enablement to make your marriage to become effective and to become a channel. Now, what am I saying? When you receive, when you, when you were to come into the ministry, uh, you were, you were, hands were laid on you so that you can receive the Holy Spirit enablement for it. Your wife may have been filled with the Holy Spirit to live the Christian life. But when we come together as husband and wife, the Bible is again saying that God made them one with a portion of the Spirit in their union. So some other versions like a, a message. Mommy, can you check message? Message again says that there is the spirit of marriage. There is the spirit of marriage. And the spirit of marriage is not just an ordinary spirit. It's a spirit that God himself, you know, has uh, put there so that what God wants to achieve is achieved. Please help us read it. Malachi chapter 2, verse 15, yes. message. God, not you, made marriage. Okay. His spirit inhabits even the smallest details of marriage. His spirit inhabits even the smallest details of marriage. Uh -huh. And what does he want from marriage? Yes. Children of God. Mm -hmm. That's what. So guard the spirit of marriage within you. Hmm. Don't cheat on your spouse. Guard the spirit of marriage within you. God left a portion of the spirit, which we are referring to here now, as the spirit of marriage, the, a portion of the Holy Spirit in their union. And which means that each marriage, each marriage for each couple has a spirit as a portion of the spirit to make your marriage produce result. Now, the Bible says, God, because the spirit of God is in every detail of your marriage, every detail of it, which means as we are looking at this today, we are looking at the fact that me and my wife, we did not just come together because we want to. He said, God, made marriage, not you. Even though each one of us, we became convinced, we made our choice, but we wanted to understand that God actually is behind every marriage. And God has left a residue, a portion of his spirit in our union, such that the spirit of our marriage <laughs> I don't know. The spirit of our marriage was meant to activate all that this journey is supposed to produce for God, godly offspring. Now, the, the, maybe the least of it is to have children that are godly. But beyond children, there are godly offspring, things that should be springing forth out of our marriage as a contribution to the purpose of God on earth, as a channel for God's purpose to be released on earth, to be, uh, to be brought forth into the earth, and for the people of God to be particularly benefited because I am married to my wife. So that's the first thing, that there's a purpose. And that purpose was actually activated and enabled by the spirit, which we are calling the spirit of marriage 
in this particular verse. So what does God want? Each one of us need to know that we're in this marriage because God wanted it. The Bible said, when we began to read in Genesis, it said, male and female made he them, and he blessed them. As if to say that the male and female that God is putting together is so as to bring completeness, to bring uh, fulfillment, to bring increase to his purpose on earth, and for them to together become a composite channel for what God wants to do on the face of the earth. Let me ask Sister Shade to make an input into that before we go ahead. And then if uh, the prophets will want to add one thing or the other to that. Yes, Sister Shade. Now, looking at the, the marriage that God made, I'm also discovering that um, his choice of us as couples, his choice of us, even as individuals, is his choice for us as couples. He will not choose a man and neglect his marriage. When he chooses a man, when he makes his choice of a man and makes his choice of a woman, he does not leave their marriage aside. His choice, you know, when we are considering the clergy, uh, a chosen vessel, it includes our marriage. And I'm also noticing there, uh, as we have seen from this book of Malachi, that um, uh, God is interested, is expecting an offspring from our union, not only children, but something godly that he wants to, 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 to bring forth out of our union. I'm seeing that our marriage is a choice. It's supposed to, you know, bring something out to make the Lord manifest, to represent in the, in the language of Ephesians chapter five, to be an illustration, a correct illustration of Christ's union with the church. The marriage of a clergy is a chosen vessel. It's a chosen marriage to illustrate the marriage between Christ and the church. So it's very crucial for us to know that we are not just married like any ordinary person. Our marriage is meant to demonstrate something upon the face of the earth. Okay, so before we leave, before we get across there, it then means that for a man that God plans to use in ministry, God also has made a choice of his marriage for his marriage to become compatible with what God wants to do through him in the ministry. So the first thing that has to dawn on us today as men and women of the clergy is to recognize that even your marriage is not a dendum to your marriage to ministry. It's not accidental at all. It's also chosen, which means the wife God had given you was also chosen with a divine purpose in mind that this one, this woman, is going to stand together with this man to serve me on the pulpit and to for me to reveal myself to the people. Which means, mom, am I, are you following me? I see it to say that, whereas other people have married, they can have their children, they can have their job, they can do anything they like. But because God is calling us into the ministry as men and women of the clergy, God also knows that apart from that, and we will have children, our children will go to school and will get a job somewhere. God knew that this one has to be a pattern, has to be uh, an illustration, has to be not just that we're going to live well as husband and wife, not that we're just going to enjoy our home, but our home again has been chosen as a channel 
of instructing all other families that will be under our hand. Which means then that your marriage itself, as private as it is to you, honestly speaking, is not private. Because the, the people under you, they needed to see how to marry. They needed to see through our marriage what is the correct biblical pattern of a Christian home. They also need to see what is how did Jesus Christ's relationship with his church, how is it manifested? And God is saying, our own marriage particularly is meant to do that. So that's the first thing. And I just want to say to everyone hearing us, and that there is a portion of the spirit that God has invested to make it happen. So each one of us, I want us before we finish uh, the, the family clinic to begin to pray. Lord, your purpose for bringing me to the life of my husband or bringing my wife to my life as a chosen vessel, you know, for your work of revival in the end time, for which you also release a portion of the spirit for it to happen, let it not be a waste. It is not enough that we are eating well, we are sleeping well, but the purpose for which we are raised must also be fulfilled. Uh, let me ask the prophets if they want to uh, make an input into this before we go ahead. Uh, the dimension of the spirit as we read in the message makes the whole matter very, very serious. In other words, you know, we cannot actually compartmentalize our lives as ministers. It means that my marriage to her is part of my Christian life. Mm. My marriage to her is also part of the ministry. In other words, I cannot have an effective relationship with God, and then I don't have a relationship with her. And I cannot be in an effective ministry when I don't have a relationship at home with my wife. And not only that, you know, the issue of raising godly children also, I see that that is also very, very important because my sons will learn from me how to love a wife, will learn from me how to manage a family. And our daughters also will learn from her how to love a husband and how to manage a home. So the matter is very, very serious. And to me, if it is not well in the home of the minister, he cannot actually be effective. He cannot be effective in ministry because there will be nothing to show. There is nothing that people can see to encourage them also to you know, to, to be able to run a home that will meet God's purpose for instituting marriage. Right. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Gata, you want to add something or I can go ahead? I, I just wanted to say that it's so serious that it means sass and mass that God, your coming together is not an accident. God brought you together to take you somewhere in his agenda. And this reminds me of the call of Abraham in Genesis 12, where he was told that as a result of his family, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Wow. So your family is critical to the blessing of other families as a minister. And you know, when Sister Shade was talking, I began to shudder inside that us as wives, that we are so critical to the purpose of God that God brought us so that we can partner with our husbands to accomplish his purpose. So it's not a matter of education now. It's a matter of God's spirit attending us. And it means that, you know, that message to is very, that every minute detail of our relationship is of concern to God. There is nothing I can do anyhow the way I like. 
It's no longer the way I like, but the way God wants. Thank you. Thank you for noting that his spirit, the Holy Spirit, inhabits even the smallest details of marriage. So what it means for us to become a vessel is to recognize that every detail of our marriage, of our relationship, is inhabited by the Holy Ghost. And which means the Holy Spirit has something to impact, has something to release in every detail of it. So there's nothing that we can say, well, uh, leave that, leave that, let's, let's face reality now, forget about prayer, forget about this. Not your own marriage, not your own marriage. There's no discussion you should be having and you will forget that God is a witness standing there and say, look, you know, I'm interested. I am a stakeholder in your marriage. Mm. There's something I want to do with it. There's a purpose for it. There are lights waiting. So when uh, Sister Geta pointed to the fact that God was sent to Abraham, for your family, out of your family, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's, that's wonderful. And it's like talking to a pastor that mm. out of your family, all the families in this congregation shall be blessed, shall be directed, shall be helped. How can we then take our marriage to be little? And some of you are heads of denominations. Some of you are leading very critical section of the body of Christ. And God is saying, even your own marriage is not just, please, yes, it's private to you, but it's not private. It's a critical input into the purpose of God. Now, before we end, we must pray. Hmm. We want husband and wives to really pray. We want you to say, oh God, if your spirit has been left for my marriage to fulfill his divine purpose, let that spirit not be wasted. So when the um, uh, message said, therefore, guard the spirit of marriage within you. Guard it. Don't let it get lost. Don't let it get uh, discarded. Guard the spirit of marriage within you. Now, I don't know whether Sasha did want to add something more on how do we cleave. Yes, because we need now to say, if we have understood God's purpose for our own marriage in particular, which we are expecting that husband and wife, you will please take time to pray and say, okay, God, we've been married maybe for 20 years. We've been married maybe for 10 years. Some of you are married for many more years than that, but you've never sat down to say, okay, what is the purpose of me and my wife in the ministry? What are we there for? Why is it her that God gave me? Why is this Sister Shade that God gave me? And why was I the one that you had to marry? Because I'm now beginning to realize that suppose I marry someone else who is not equipped, who is not prepared for the kind of assignment I have in life, I will have become a disaster myself. Mm -hmm. I will have been crippled completely in life. Mm -hmm. So each one of us need to look at that and recognize that there's a spirit in your wife that God put in her for this marriage. There's a spirit in me that God put in me for this marriage. And it must be engaged to make that marriage work. So now, in order to make it work, we're talking about coupling. How do we live and cleave? Because the Bible says, for this cause, shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. Perhaps he will want to help us to deal with that very quickly before we go. Um, when that scripture in Genesis chapter two says for this cause, that's uh, Genesis chapter two, verse 24. And it's also in Matthew chapter 19. 
But Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Um, we, we can't continue with that verse without looking at for which cause, mm. for which reason. Because of what shall a man, is a man commanded to leave his father and mother? Why? Why should a man see his father and mother who brought him up and decide to leave them at this point of marriage? Uh, and the, the answer is in verse 23, before verse 24. When he says, therefore, when he says for this cause, the cause is in verse 23, he says, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, therefore, because of this, because your wife is the bone of your bones and the flesh of your flesh, she is not from outside somewhere. Even though she was born by Mr. and Mrs. somebody, but you see, God himself ordered things in such a way that it is your bone that you have carried. Don't look elsewhere because you're already married. It's your bone. That's your bone. Don't worry about what is happening presently. That's not the issue. We are not talking about the present situation. What will be done to make sure that this bone functions well? It's a different matter. But it's important for us to understand that there is a reason why you must leave all else and cleave. Why you must leave all, of course, if you will leave father and mother, who else will you not leave? You will leave friends. You will leave even those intercessors that are praying more than your wife, so to say, for you. Their prayers are plenty and good, but it's not good enough. It's not suitable. Her prayer is the suitable prayer. Right. Even if it's five minutes, that's the suitable helper. So it's important for us to know that there is a reason to leave all else and clean. If we're going to be channels of blessings, it's important to focus on God's focus and not look here and there when God has given you something suitable. Right. Right, thank you. Now, why she referred to these passages, uh, you know, in my mind, my mind went so much. I found that that passage was quoted in Genesis 2. It was quoted in Matthew 19. And then it was quoted in Ephesians. So I wanted to see the context in which each of it was quoted. Whether it will add a little more to our knowledge of why we should clean. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, that she has just referred to, the Bible said, Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. So the first reason that I saw in that place is that this is the bone that was taken out of me. As long as that bone is away, I am incomplete. As long as that bone has not been brought back to be fitted to the hole that was created there, I will forever go with a loophole in life. My ministry will have a loophole if she does not come in. My journey in life will have a loophole if she's not there. Whatever I'm supposed to contribute to the purpose of God on earth, we have a, a loophole because that which should make me complete has not come. So I saw that, ah, for that reason, since there's no other one that can fit my life, since there's no other one that can complete me, so there's no other one that can uh, bring that which was taken and brought it back. Then I have to leave everything else 
to cleave. So we are saying that for us to become that channel and that a vessel that God is bringing us together for, we need to cleave. You need to leave all else. If you don't leave all else and you're dangling here and there, there will be a loophole in your ministry. Pastor, if you don't cleave to this woman for whom God has made your help, the one that is fit, the one that is actually coming to fill up what was taken out, whatever else you are doing somewhere else, there shall be incompleteness about it. There shall be a loophole. All right. But when I go to the book of Matthew 19, I saw another context, which is also exciting to me. You know, in verse 4 and 5, he said, and he answered and said to them, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Please get that now. That he made them male and female and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more two but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Now, I was just checking and said, ah, He who made them in the beginning, He made them male and female, male and female, male and female, male and female. As if there is this couple, male, female, male, female, male, female, male, female, that God made in order for them to be productive, in order for them to produce. And he's now saying, <laughs> when Ragbile came out male, there was a female. <laughs> Do you understand? There was a female of this male that will make it a complete, a man. complete man. And if that female has not come, they say, Kai, we are still waiting for his female. As if, you know, the male and female, the male and female that God blessed, blessed into what he want them to do and say, be fruitful and be multiplied. Until she came, my female has not come. So now that God has brought her, this is the female of the male. And the two of them are one now. So for this reason, shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. This is the reason now, because this is now the female of this male. And because he who made them in the beginning, made them male and female, 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 male and female for completion, for productivity, for blessing, for service, for anything. This is the female of Brother Billy. For that reason, I have to leave everything else and concentrate on my own female. Because the male without its own female is incomplete and it will not work. So I realize that all of you that are in our class now, the female of your life is that woman. Until she is there, <laughs> your, your, the, your male has no female. And if you understand what that means, I don't know how to explain it, but I think I must go away because of time. <laughs> if you don't understand what it means, it means that this male is going to be barren. It's not going to produce much. You know, I didn't know. There was a time I was looking at a papa in our compound. And then somebody said, ah, this is a male papa. <laughs> it's not going to produce. <laughs> I was on there saying, hey, so what is the meaning? They no, even Popo to produce has a male and female. 
and uh, it is the female purple that the male purple was fertilized to produce. So I started wondering, where are we going to get the female of the male purple in my company? And then someone was explaining that, yes, actually, there's another one that is growing on that side, and it's the female of it. I said, okay, talk. I don't know how that works out even in botany. But biblically speaking, I'm saying here that he made them male and female. They are not duplicates. They are male and female. And so the reason to cleave is not because your wife is not exactly like you. She's not meant to be exactly like you. She's supposed to be the female of you. And you are the male of her. And so as the two must complement, that's what we must do. So for this reason, shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they, shall, they two shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more two. There are no more two, but one flesh. That what therefore God has joined together. So let's know that this thing we are talking about, it is God that joined them together. Mm. Between you and your wife, it is God that joined you together. Just know that that's the female of this male. And wives, you must know that that's the male of this female. For you to find completion in life, this is what God has joined together. And so I would like to suggest that husband and wife should agree, accept one another. If it were possible for you to join hands and say, look, Lord, I thank you for the female of me. I no longer just see Sister Shade and that sister there. I'm now seeing her as the female of Brother Billy. And is the female Billy. Oh, oh, that's how I should put it. Mm. That's the fem female Billy. Mm -hmm. This wow. is the male Billy. Wow. So when they are combined together, they just become one. They just become Billy. Like the C of the male. Yes. And the woo of the man. Wow. You know, woman and man. Hi, yeah, 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 male yeah. and female. Hi. The womb, maybe the womb of, of the, the man. man. My God. And My then God. the female. Mm. 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 And they cannot do without each other My because My they are the completion of each other. My God. My God. <laughs> are you understanding <laughs> this now? This is the womb of Brother Billy. How can a man want to produce when there's no womb? <laughs> Where will you, where will your seed stay to become mature? May God help you to understand that all your vision, all the calling of God on your life, everything you are hoping to become, it needs a womb to, 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 to incubate it for you. And the womb of man is this woman. The fee of the male is this one. Let us agree. Let us settle down quickly so that we can become the, the, the chosen vessel so that our lives will actually carry out the divine purpose that God has for us. Now, let me look at the third uh, context in which it came out again. Now, go to Ephesians chapter 5, and again you will see, look at it, in verse 30 of Ephesians 5, Verse 30, 31, and 32. It says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So what am I saying here again? That there is another reason why I must give to my wife is because we are members, members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. As if to say together, we become members of his body, 
of his flesh, of his bones. This is a mystery. So our marriage itself coming together is a contribution to the body of Christ as members, right? as the, the bride of Christ, as members. I don't know what, what portion of the bride of Christ we uh, stand in, but we stand in as one in that, in that body. He says, so for this cause, not to cause confusion to the body of Christ, not to bring injury to the body of Christ, not to bring a dislocation to the bride of Christ. My marriage, I have to clean. Which means that if your marriage is not working well, you are enduring Christ. Mm. You are bringing dislocation to the bride of Christ. You are bringing leakage to the things that Christ wants to do through his body. So your oneness is much more than your enjoyment. Your oneness is far, far, far important than your personal pleasure. Hey, I want to join yourself and agree together and be loving one another. Thank you for that. But beyond that, your being one has a very critical purpose for the body of Christ to be made complete. It's a mystery. And we need to take note of that mystery. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. So uh, that's how far I think we can deal with the matter of cleaning. So to clean means to hold tightly to. Don't let anything come between the two of you. Don't let anything separate you. Don't let anything cut you asunder. Let not man cut asunder. And when the word you use, let not man, I realize that every disagreement in marriage is the man in man that causes it. It's the old man. It's Mr. Flesh that causes it. Every time a wife says, no, man, no go agree. Man, no go agree. And she's taking her head like that. It is Mr. Flesh inside that is cutting a sermon. Even when they said, uh, Brother Moses, give them permission to divorce. He said, no, it's the hardness of your heart. It's the hardness of your heart. There's nothing that is not possible for you and your wife to do together. The spirit of marriage is already in you. The spirit of, you know, when they said the spirit of marriage, that is the spirit of bonding. The spirit of marrying is already there. And every detail of your marriage, eh, the spirit of God is in it. So if we just understand and we don't allow Mr. Flesh to come between us, that issue you are arguing about, is it not the old man that is doing it? That thing you are insisting upon, that's your strong will. It's not the old man that is doing it. Now, I want you to know, as a man of the pledge, your marriage, we are beginning to see now, is supposed to become a vessel to convey a divine purpose to God. And for this reason, we must clean. We must make sure that there's nothing that stands between us, nothing that breaks between us, nothing that will not allow us to flow together. And if you don't have agreement with one another, the Bible says your prayer will be hindered. Any other point before you lead us to the second uh, issue? Can you... Maybe if I can yes. say something quickly. Yes, sir. Um, looking at uh, the context of Genesis 2, 24, Matthew 19, 4 and 5, and the Ephesians 5 passage, all emphasizing the aspect of living, living, and becoming one flesh. Uh, it, 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 it means, you know, the most difficult relationship to live is actually father and mother. Mm. But the Bible says in marriage, there must be a living before you can live. And if you don't live, you cannot live. And if you don't live, you cannot become one. And that is to say that my the relationship with her requires commitment. It requires commitment. 
And this commitment first must be to God. And then secondly, to her and this union. If we want to achieve God's purpose. Again, it means that not even ministry should interfere with my relationship with her. I cannot, for the purpose of ministry, neglect her, ignore her, and you know, prioritize the ministry above my relationship with her. You know, that will not be proper. So my commitment first is to God and then to her. And because of that, for us to be committed to each other, we must make necessary adjustments all through the relationship so that we'll continue to function together. All right, thank you very much. Sister Shade, can you introduce us to the second uh, outline of our thoughts so as to deal with that? Maybe if we do that uh, today and we finish, that will be all right so that tomorrow we we'll come back and continue. If we are to be a channel of blessings that is not leaking, I mean, if the husband and the wife coupled together, if we are to be a channel of blessings that is not leaking or losing pressure or narrowed down with bottlenecks, we need to seek how to sincerely couple together so as to allow a free flow of grace into each other and uh, through each other into the ministry to which we have been called and chosen to be a vessel. And the two shall become one flesh. Mm -hmm. So we are going to examine uh, three issues that normally happens in a couple that are not, um, that are uh, like the hindrances on to being a channel of blessings. We have said that um, we must be a channel that is not leaking or losing pressure or narrowed down with bottlenecks. Those three things. A channel, not a leaking channel, not a channel that loses pressure, not a channel that has bottlenecks that will not allow a free flow. So we need to check this. What are those things that will not allow uh, our, our coupling together, our operating together as a couple to be a channel of blessings? Mm. Uh, as the Lord himself has said it, just as we said, we are a chosen vessel. Our marriage is also chosen to achieve a particular purpose. Mm. So what are those things that normally makes us to leak away? Mm. Where are the leakages? Where does the spirit of marriage leak away from? And um, what, even when we start well, what are the things that makes us to lose pressure? Things that, that will not allow us to rise up to the task that God has given us. When you are taking one step, two steps forward, you are taking one step backward. What are those things that makes us to lose pressure? And what are the things that are like bottlenecks? Bottlenecks that will not allow us to flow out freely, both to each other and uh, to the people that God has chosen us to lead. Right. Now, perhaps I should start by looking at it uh, one after the other and then we can pick issues. Now, my own first understanding is to define what you mean by leakages. Leakages are sometimes imperceptible puncture that allows the flow of the fluid, of the oil, or the anointing to leak out. It allows the virtue of your relationship to leak out. You know, sometimes when we were still, uh, I remember that one of the cars I first used is a B2. And eh? Volkswagen. a Volkswagen B2 is our first car. 
And one of the things, because uh, you don't put water. So the only thing that is important for Volkswagen is for the oil not to leak away. But you know, sometimes as we are as we are driving, the thing is dropping, the engine is dropping. To, 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 to. When you just drive, you just see uh, uh, oil. You will just line up everywhere you went. By the time you get to where you are going, it has finished, and then suddenly your engine has knocked. So also, if we are going to be channels and vessels that God wants to use, and the virtue and the grace of God is leaking away in our marriage, <laughs> very soon that marriage may knock, may knock engine. So the first problem I want us to look at is leakages. And I have about four uh, issues I talk about leakages. Leakages of communal relationship. When your communal relationship, your communion, is beginning to leak. As if to say, the kind of thing that bonded us together, something has gradually punctured it. And so the, 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 the flow of the virtue that we flow into each other, it doesn't flow to each other again. It flows and drops down. And it comes either because of a disagreement that instead of sharing with one another, you are keeping something. The other one does not know what you are doing. So something is leaking. Now, leakages of the uh, marital, I don't know how to call it, but there are secrets. And it's okay that between you and your wife, there are your privacies. When you allow your privacy to leak out, the things that should be between you and your wife, the things that your wife confided in you, the things your husband confided in you about that bonded you together. Because the Bible said the two of them were both naked and they were not ashamed. But now, there's something that is beginning to leak out. There's a, 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 some, a space is being created that that oneness, that openness, that flow is not able to flow again. Uh, leakages. I also look at leakages as, uh, you know, a leakage could be uh, an outlet through which resources is going away. Now, there could be leakages of your family finance, whereby what ought to flow together between the two of you is leaking away to someone else and your partner did not know about it. So it, it leaks away your confidence in each other. It leaks away your trust. The other one said, oh, I don't know what my husband is doing now. Let me just be careful for my own self. Leakages has come in. So how do we make sure there are no leakages in our marriage, marital relationship? The first answer is still to clean. The first answer is still to, to recognize that I belong to her. She belongs to me. And that the two of us, we have been blessed together. The blessing that was placed on my head is the same blessing on her life. We don't have separate blessings. And when we begin to separate and say, well, that's your own, this is my own, definitely those lines of division will become lines of leakage. Then because you are not bonding together, you are not combining together, you are not flowing together, the two of you are not uh, uh, together. So your two are not better than one anymore because you are now one, 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 one. There is leakage. Leakage of virtue. 
Now, what of leakage of grace? When there's distraction, when your marriage is not working well, whatever anointing you thought you got in your private prayer life, when you meet your husband or you meet your wife that is at loggerhead with you, I'm sure that's where it will leak out. You cannot be fooled again because somebody has punctured it. Imagine you are coming all the way from heaven and say, oh, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, praise God. And your wife looking and say, welcome, oh, man of God, man of God. The issue you left before you say you are going to pray is still waiting for you. So let's sit down and talk. Oh. Say, praise the Lord. Say, let's be praise the Lord now. Let's face reality. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, all that you thought you have gathered we just immediately evaporate. It will just leak out. So this harmony is a very strong puncture that brings leakages in marriage. So the question of how to uh, clean, how to make sure that your commitment to one another is critical. And when Baba Pufi was talking, and he said, the man must leave his father and mother. Sometimes, brothers, you are leaking out because you are having a private uh, communion, com commitment somewhere. That say, it's my mother, it's my mother, it's my mother. And your wife says, is it not also my mother? He said, well, yeah, it's our mother, but uh, you know that's my own mother. Mm -hmm. That leakage must be dealt with so that you can fulfill what God wanted you to fulfill. Don't let the anointing, the virtue that God is releasing for you to become a channel, don't let it leak out with all this uh, imbalance, incongruence in between the two of you. You want to say something about that particular aspect of leakages, because we have to deal with leakages so that our channel is not leaking. Our channel is not leaking, it's not dropping, 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 dropping without anybody knowing it. Actually, the cause of leakages all the time mm. is lack of proper cleaving. Mm. Because when there is no proper cleaving, then there is a gap. A, a, a point of leakage is a gap. That's where things escape. Mm. So once there is a gap in our relationship, be leakage. there will be leakage. Something will leak out. Mm. That's why the issue of cleaving at all points is very crucial. Gaps, gaps in our communication. Mm. Sometimes we prefer as clergy to communicate with our church members than to communicate with our wives. Leakages. Leakages. And then you come back deflated, mm. dissipated. Something has leaked away. And the woman is waiting. There is not, in fact, she, you won't have time for her. Whereas you spend two hours listening to this other church member. Mm. When you get home and she says, yeah, I have something to say. Say five minutes, five minutes. Because I, don't have time. I have a parochial council meeting. Hey, PCC. PCC. I don't have time now. So five minutes, tell me what's the matter. <laughs> there is a gap. And there will be leakages. So the, the answer to this problem is to make sure that there is no gap. No gap in communication, no gap in our in our oneness, no gap, no gap in, in our spending, no gap in any way between us. There is nothing that you 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 are keeping secret that your wife does not know. Even in our understanding of the, the word of God, mm -hmm. as Jesus himself said, he said, everything you have given me, oh, Father, I have given them. Wow. Let there be nothing between. And then, my personal revelation. Yes, you are going to get your own if you want a revelation. Mm -hmm. No. God has put us together. You are not going to be crowned on that day without me. Wow. We are going to be rewarded together. So what are you keeping? That's the issue. Husband and wife should understand that being one 
you will even be rewarded together. You are joint inheritors of the grace of love. So what are you giving? Where is this gap coming from? Let's close up, close up, close up. Let there be nothing between. Nothing between. The song we used to sing, nothing between my soul and the Savior. Not of this world, any lucid dream. I have renounced all sin. Jesus is mine. There is nothing between. So, so if we are singing that song, as we are singing it to the Lord like that, we must be able to sing it with ourselves. Nothing between. Nothing. If we are going to, by the grace of God, avoid leakages. Leakages in the place of prayer. We need to trust God for that. Thank you for noting that. That cleaving is the answer to it. Oneness, bonding at all times in all things is the key onto avoiding leakages in our marital relationship. Any comment from you, sir? Before we move ahead, um, when when I when I read John chapter three verse nineteen to twenty one, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For so everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Uh, part of what brings gaps and leakage is walking in darkness. Why? There are men and women who go to the bathroom with their phones. There are certain calls that come in the night. And the wife is asking, or the husband is asking, who is this woman in the night? Who is that? Who is that? You know, if that is darkness. There are unexplained hours. You just disappear. Your phone is Why? not visible. And there is no explanation. All this, they bring down. They begin to bring suspicion. And once a woman doesn't trust her husband, you will try to get anything out of her. You cannot get it because she is no longer secure. And once darkness comes into the relationship, when you see that, when the secretary in the office calls and you the husband jumps and he is gone, no explanation. He has to run into the toilet to <laughs> answer the call into <laughs> darkness. Yes. 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 And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, darkness, darkness brings gap and mm. gap brings suspicion brings distrust and marriage is based on trust and once mm. trust functions everything can be and uh, so it's very very important Thank you. that we be open in every way when we were talking mm. on cleaving you know, cleaving, somebody said, is glue, like gluing. Two yes. pieces of papers that are glued together and you want to separate them, you have, you tear both. Both of them become useless. Mm -hmm. And that is what is happening in some ministers' homes. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. That's very illuminating, isn't it? Uh, man of God, do you have to run into the darkness to go and answer a phone call? Are there certain texts that when it enters, it says, pew, pew, quickly bang, wrong. Your wife said, let me see you. I say, no, 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 what are you doing? So sometimes you see husband and wife fighting over the phone because there's something that you don't want your us, your wife to see. Sometimes you quickly, quickly, you just wipe something off. Your wife said, ah, what is it? And then sometimes, and this is also clever, she quickly go to your recycled bin or deleted items and begin to trace things. You don't have to be doing that. And you are one, there's nothing to hide. Nothing. 
Sometimes you are hiding your, your bank particulars. But, so let's take note that those who are walking in the light, they actually want to come to the truth. The he that doeth truth cometh to the light, yeah. that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. So let there be nothing, nothing to hide. No private phone call that your wife or your husband was not here. No counseling that your wife must not be part of. If anybody is coming to you for counseling as a man of God, let him know that you and your wife you are one and you are going to handle it together. Tell him and say this thing you are telling me, me and my wife, we are going to pray over it together. In fact, I want us to meet together to pray over it. And let's talk to the men of God that are hearing me. Don't keep doing private counseling with women. You don't have what it takes to help a woman know. It is the female of this male that has been posted to handle certain things for you. Don't think you are very strong. You are not so strong. You are weak. If I must tell you, you are weak. And when they come and they are turning their eyes and the woman started weeping on your neck, hey, and you stand and say, oh, don't weep again. And you brought your handkerchief and you are rubbing somebody's uh, uh, woman's uh, face. You are going. Man of God, you are going. <laughs> That's how some of our seniors went and they never came back. Yes. Uh, please be careful. Be careful. This is very important. Don't allow leakages in your marital relationship. Don't allow anything that your wife does not have insight into. Let everything be open. Let everything be transparent. May God help us in the name of Jesus. There is the spirit of marriage. And that God himself deliberately left a portion of his spirit that is dedicated to our marriage. And God did it so that our home can become a channel that bring an offspring, offspring for God, something that God can rejoice in, something that can break forth. That both me and my wife, both you and your wife, God wants to use you to bring a blessing to our generation. When we come tomorrow, we will kick off from where we are stopped. We are still looking at if we are going to be channels of blessing, how do we deal with leakages? And that's all we're dealing with for today. By tomorrow, we're going to look at loss. Loss of pressure, loss of focus, loss of momentum, loss of zeal, loss of power for effective ministry that emanates from the marriage. I think when we come back, we'll look at that. Let me ask uh, our coordinator to lead us to pray and to tie our session together today. Uh, Brother Let us pray. Mighty Heavenly Father, thank you for guiding us through this session. Help us as men of the clergy to know that in marriage we are a link in a chain. If it is well with us, it will affect so many others. And if it is not well with us, it will also affect so many others. Lord, we pray that as men of the clergy, we will get it right at home. Mm -hmm. We will get it right in ministry. Mm -hmm. That, Lord, our relationship will be a sample for others to emulate. Mm -hmm. Help us, oh God, even as the clergy, to leave everything that will come between us, to cleave to each other as a basis of becoming one. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Continue to speak to us and to also prepare us even for tomorrow's session. The glory and honor in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.